In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Zoom on an iPhone or Android phone, step by step. The first thing that you need to be aware of though, is that not everything works on the Zoom mobile app as it does on the desktop version for Windows and for Mac. For example, there are limited display options on the Zoom mobile app. You can only have four faces on the same screen at a time, whereas on your desktop, you can have up to 25 participants on a single screen. Also, if you're using an Android phone, you won't be able to use the virtual background feature that comes with Zoom. And depending on how old your mobile phone is, you might not even be able to record meetings and use other features of Zoom as well. So although using the Zoom app on your phone can be convenient, it doesn't always work for every situation. Now, having said that, this is how you can use Zoom on your iPhone or Android phone. So step number one, look for Zoom Cloud Meetings in your Play Store or App Store. Then install the app and press open. And you will be redirected to this page here where you have the opportunity to join a meeting. You don't have to create a Zoom account to join a meeting. So you can join a meeting by installing the app onto your phone. And then once you open the app, you can join a meeting like this. So if you press on join a meeting, you need the meeting ID in order to join the meeting. And the host of that meeting will send you the meeting ID and also a password if that is required. Also, when you're joining a meeting, you have two options here. You can select the first option if you want to mute yourself when you're entering the meeting. And you can select the second option if you want your video turned off when you're entering the meeting. Obviously, you can turn on both options once you are in the meeting. And then you click on join meeting to join the meeting. So it's that simple, really. Step number two, if you want to host the meeting, you can sign up. And that is if you haven't already created an account or you can sign in if you already have created an account with zoom.us. So I'm going to sign in because I already signed up on the website. You can also sign in with your Google account or Facebook account for easy and fast signing in. If you're using an iPhone, you can give Zoom access to your phone's calendar and to send you notifications. I'm using an Android here, so I don't have this option. And now this is the home page of the app. So you can see on the top menu area is where all of the magic happens. So you can start a new meeting here. You can join an existing meeting. And this is what we've just covered. You can also schedule a meeting or share your screen. This is one place where you can share your screen. However, when you're hosting a meeting, you also have the possibility to share your screen there. So let's start with the first option to start a new meeting. So I'm going to click on new meeting. I want to host this meeting with video on. It also asks if I want to use my personal meeting ID. So your personal meeting room is ideal for use with people that you meet with regularly. So your personal meeting ID and personal link is what you will give people to join your personal meeting room. However, I don't recommend that you use it for back-to-back -back meetings or for people that you do not meet with regularly. Once a participant has the link to your personal meeting ID, they can join it at any time the meeting is in use. Then we're going to click on start a meeting. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like it so that it can be shared with more people and help out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. I'm going to give Zoom access to my microphone, camera and storage and allow the Zoom app to record the meetings. You can also enable the record feature when you're scheduling a meeting. The first thing that is really important when you're hosting a meeting is your meeting ID and password at the top. You will need to send this to your participants if you want them to join your meeting. Do you remember at the start where we had to put our meeting ID to join a meeting? This is where you as the host or organizer of the meeting can find that information. So right there at the top. So I'll show you now how to invite participants and how you can send them the link to join your meeting. And of course, add your meeting ID and password to the invitation. If you want to invite participants to join your meeting, you need to click on participants at the bottom here. So it is showing me that I'm the host of this meeting right here at the top. And at the bottom, I can invite participants by clicking on invite. And there are many options here. As you can see, for example, I can invite people from my contact list 
I can send an email invitation to people. I can send a message invitation. I can copy the URL and share that with people, for example, on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram. If you do that though, don't forget to send participants the meeting ID and password. So for example, if I want to invite participants by sending them a message, I click on message. Then I choose the person I want to send the invitation to. Then I need to add the meeting ID and password to the message and send. And then when somebody clicks on this link, they can join the meeting by downloading Zoom onto their phone and by adding the meeting ID and password if it is required to join the meeting. This is how easy it is. Other options that you have here on the participants is chat. So you can chat with your participants by clicking here. You can also mute all participants if you want to be the only speaker and you want your participants to focus on you. And you can also unmute all participants or give them the option to unmute themselves. Other control options that you have here are share content. If I click on that, there are so many options for sharing content. So for example, you can share a file from your Dropbox or your Google Drive account or photos from your phone or you can share your screen by clicking on share screen. You can also use the whiteboard feature. So if you click on that, you can scribble things. You can teach using the whiteboard. Then click share again to exit. Other options on the control menu are stop video and start video. So if you don't want to be seen, you can stop the video. You can also mute and unmute yourself here. Also, if you click on more where the three dots are, you have access to more features, for example, Again, you can chat with participants by clicking on chat. You can also react during a meeting by sending a thumbs up or clapping to communicate without interrupting the meeting. Reactions will disappear after five seconds. And if you are using a more recent iPhone, you can also use the virtual background feature that comes with Zoom. Because I'm using an Android phone, I don't have this option. And if you're using your Android phone, you can also access your meeting settings here. In this area, you have the possibility to lock your meeting, for example. So that means that no one can join the meeting after you lock the meeting, even if they have the ID and password to join the meeting. You can also enable waiting room. This is a virtual waiting room where people are waiting until you're ready to receive them for the meeting. You also have the possibility to enable or disable other features here. If you want to exit, click on close on the top left hand corner. All right, now let's end the meeting at the top right hand corner. So I'm going to click on end and I have the option to end the meeting for all. And that means I'm closing the meeting completely or I can leave the meeting and participants can continue to communicate with each other. So I'm going to click on end meeting for all. So again, we have the home page area. All right, now you can schedule a meeting by clicking here and by completing this simple form. Also, if you're using the Zoom app on your iPhone, you can link your iPhone calendar with the Zoom app. The great thing about this is that your Zoom mobile app can check your calendar for Zoom meetings and add them to your upcoming meetings in Zoom. So it's quite useful to link your calendar to your Zoom app. You can also add your scheduled meeting to your Android calendar by checking the box at the bottom. And if you click on advanced options, you can, among other options, choose to automatically record your meetings. So you can see this form is really straightforward to complete. Once you're done, then you select done. And then again, at the top right hand corner, you have the share screen option. And there again, you want to share your key or meeting ID from a Zoom room that is already in existence. So you can't do this yet if you haven't set up one or someone didn't invite you to one. Also, you can add contacts here right in the center by clicking on the link, especially if you're going to be using Zoom frequently, then you can add your contacts here and you can also chat with participants here as well. At the very bottom, you can easily access your personal meeting ID. And I spoke about that earlier. So if you're hosting meetings with somebody regularly, then this is where you can just send them the invitation. So it's really convenient and fast that way. And finally, under settings, you can change settings for all of these options. For example, on the meeting settings, you can see auto connect audio is off. And this is useful so that people don't accidentally listen to something that you're not ready to share. There are many other features that you can also modify, for example, safe driving mode or reaction skin tone and so much more. 
All right, so this pretty much covers Zoom on the phone. If you want to see a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial about how to use Zoom on your computer, I will link that tutorial here now and in the description box. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video useful, please give it a big thumbs up and comment below if you have any more questions or comments. Bye-bye.